They tell us the universe is empty, a lifeless void. They dismiss the sightings, the encounters as delusion. But those are lies meant to keep you complacent. Uncensored photos have surfaced, revealing a chilling truth. These aren't blurry hoaxes, but stark evidence of an alien reality. A reality that will invade your thoughts and linger in your nightmares. Once you witness the impossible, you can never unsee it. The first image is a screen grab from a video filmed by a U.S. Marine officer on the 20th of April in 2021 on a military base in 29 Palms, California. After the release of the photograph, multiple Marines came forward to confirm the existence of an aircraft, saying that while the photo showcases only the triangle-shaped formation of bright lights, in person the men were able to make out the black body of the aircraft as well. The unidentified flying object is said to have hovered for 10 minutes in the air before it suddenly vanish without any trace. The men were able to rule out flares for being the cause of the mysterious lights, but were never able to figure out exactly what they saw that night. However, it appears the footage has not been taken lightly as the Pentagon has started an investigation into just what exactly was seen on the night of April 20th of 2021 in the skies above the 29 Bombs military base. Next up, we have a series of photographs taken by cosmonaut Ivan Vanger in August of 2020 whilst aboard the International Space Station that appears to depict five unidentified flying objects flying at the same speed while maintaining the same distance between each other as well as their surroundings, moving in a straight line just above the Earth's curved horizon visible in the night sky. Vanguar, both surprised and curious, took to Twitter, now named X, to share the footage in hopes of getting some clarity as to exactly what he was looking at. In an exciting unfolding of events, his tweet was picked up by the Russian space agency Roscosmos and a spokesperson revealed that experts were in fact studying the video in an attempt to determine what exactly Vanguard had managed to capture. Did you guys know that Japan was a major hotbed for UFO activity? Because I didn't. But apparently the Pentagon does? In fact, UFO sightings are so common in Japan that its military has reportedly ordered all pilots to disclose any and all identified flying objects directly to the Japanese government. Not only that, but Japanese self-defense forces have also undergone extensive training in relation to UFO sighting protocol. To date, six alleged encounters between pilots and UFOs have been reported to the Japanese government, one of which was recorded, and depicts 10 white circular balls flying through the skies of Osaka in Japan. While the government has yet to publicly comment on any of the incidents, the update of self-defense protocol alone is pretty telling. The next image was shared by a pretty reputable source, National Geographic. The image was captured by Sergio Loa on September 4th of 1971 during an aerial survey of Lake Cote. Everything seemed pretty normal until the photos were taken back to Loiza's development lab where he noticed something very strange. A metallic flying aircraft, estimated to have a diameter of 160 feet, was located in the corner of one of the photographs. When he presented the photos to his superiors at the National Geographic Institute, they shut him down quick, forbidding Sergio as well as his colleagues from sharing any information of what they had seen that day. In 1979, however, the photograph was leaked, and the object that appeared in the image was officially classified as an unidentified flying object. In 2021, the existence of the object was again confirmed after the original copy of the photograph was scanned and it was revealed that the UFO's presence was more than just a scratch on the lens or a piece of dust in the wind. So what do you think it was? Let us know in the comments. Next. Next up, we have footage that comes to us straight from the declassifieds. Remember how I told you at the beginning of the video that the government quite literally copped to the fact that they have been hiding the existence of UFOs for years? Well, they did, and they came with receipts. On the 15th of January in 2023, while surveilling an MQ-9 Reaper aircraft, an unidentified aerial presence was captured, moving at speeds unreachable by any of Earth's modern-day technological advances. Not only this, but as the object whizzed through the field of view of the camera lens, it appeared to leave behind an atmospheric wake before disappearing completely into the sky. Guys, if you have any, please leave your UFO and alien stories in the comments. I would love to hear about your experiences with any of these kind of things. Next up, we have arguably the most beautiful alien assuming photograph I have ever seen. The photo was taken in 2004 by a retired Royal Air Force officer while on vacation in Sri Lanka. The site was described 
described as some kind of colorful giant donut in the sky with hues of oranges, pinks, purples, and whites. After its capture, the photograph was turned into the Royal Air Force Flying Dales Base in North Yorkshire in England, where it became a classified document held by the Ministry of Defense. The image has since been declassified, of course, and is now available for public viewing, but there is still a lot of mystery surrounding the photo as well as the photographer, as his identity, along with any other information regarding the incident, is pretty much non-existent. I mean, come on, it's a giant glowing light in the sky. You're really telling me no one else saw this and that there's no other information out there other than the fact that the photo exists? Oh, yeah, and not only that, but it was deemed classified by the British Ministry of Defense, so I'm thinking there's something else going on here. Okay, I bet you didn't know that another major hotbed for extraterrestrial UFO and unidentified aerial phenomenon activity was Brazil. I mean, I did, but maybe you didn't. In fact, this kind of thing is so popular in Brazil that they have an annual day of recognition for these sightings known as the Night of the UFO, which came to be after a major event took place in 1986. On the night of May 19th, a series of unidentified flying objects were seen in the skies of Brazil, and even more non-visual objects were detected via radar across the skies of four Brazilian states. Of course, at this time, any and all knowledge the government had on the event was extremely classified. In May of 2012, however, Brazil's Freedom of Information Act went into place, after which the public demanded the release of all the documents relating to the incident. The government complied, and not only released written documents of the events, but also a series of photographs depicting strange activity within the skies above Brazil. Although the images of what appeared to be nothing more than squiggles and clouds of smoke didn't provide much clarity, a statement made by the Minister of Aeronautics did. He said, This command is of the opinion that the phenomena are solid and reflect, in a certain way, intelligence, due to the ability to follow and maintain a distance from observers, as well as to fly information. After this statement was made, the Brazilian government has still not been able to confirm exactly what took place the day the night of the UFOs was born. Next up, we have the Boyd Bushman photos. So Boyd Bushman is no longer with us, but he took with him to his grave many tales of the extraterrestrial friends he met as a Lockheed Martin engineer working within Area 51. At least that's what he claimed. In 2007, Bushman was filmed in a video talking with independent aerospace engineer Mark Q. Patterson about his experiences in the restricted area, claiming to have met several aliens, some of whom were hundreds of years old, apparently, and hailed from planet Quintumnia, even said some of these Quintumniums were employees of Area 51. Held up a bunch of photographs. The video became relatively big, but I gotta say, call me crazy, these pictures look not great. That alien looks like it's from Spirit Halloween. Nothing against Spirit Halloween. I go every Halloween, but uh, not the most convincing. I think Boyd knew he was on the outs. He died not long after this interview, and I, I think he wanted to go with a little bit of a prank. Can't blame him. In fact, I respect him for it. Number six, Gabe Zeffman. Gabe Zeffman, a private pilot and amateur photographer, spent Christmas Day 2020 flying his Senesa 150 plane over Area 51 and snapping just over 1,000 photos. He captured stunning visuals of the Nevada Test and Training Range and Area 51, showing a mysterious triangle shape inside an open hangar. The hangar is just south of the main NTTR complex at Area 51, and the object looks large, although it is unclear. It does appear to be the the only hangar that's open as well. In the videos of his flights posted on YouTube, Gabe can be heard getting clearance for his route over the restricted area. Now for this particular flight, he had higher quality photography gear that allowed him to capture better photos. So what's in the hangar? Seems like we may never know. Number five, the alien interview. So there's actually footage of this one, so yeah, not really photos, but I mean, isn't video better than a a silly old still photograph anyway. This footage was shown in a 1997 documentary entitled Area 51, The Alien Interview. And the big selling point here was that you were gonna see real footage of Area 51 employees in the S4 facility communicating with an extraterrestrial on camera. The man behind the film, simply known as Victor, narrates through the footage claiming to be former Area 51 employee and whistleblower who copied the footage, which was taken in 1989 before setting out to share it with the world. So you don't hear what was actually being said in the video. There's no sound other than the mysterious Victor re relaying the information over the footage, but you do see what looks to be your classic gray alien moving around and opening and closing its mouth. I mean, 
if it was just a puppet, there was definitely some effort put in here. And by that, I just mean they tried to make it look like it was moving. Number four, closest photos of the base ever. In 2017, Tim and Tracy of the UFO Seekers, who was mentioned before, hiked up the 1.4 mile high Tikaboo Peak, a mountain 25 miles opposite the mysterious military base, in order to capture the closest ever pictures of Area 51. From the peak of this mountain, the duo of UFO hunters used a special telescopic lenses to get the clearest photographs of the buildings and vehicles inside the top secret government site. The Area 51 pictures taken show what looks like a water tower, several complexes and vehicles moving around. Next up we have the UFO. In December of 2019, Nevada resident Steve Barron shared pictures and video of this mysterious object flying over a mountain range close to his home. So whatever the object is, looks big. It's far off in the distance, but it's very noticeable, very bright. Definitely doesn't look like the small specks you get in the sky with satellites. It's super bright again, and it moves in a strange pattern too. It doesn't move at one consistent speed or in one single direction. That's, uh, there's a point where it kind of looks like it could be a satellite. It's moving through the sky in more of a traditional pattern, just straight across. But then it stops starts moving back in the direction it was coming from and seems to clip along at a good speed too. Like whatever this thing is, it's fast. So I don't know, could be a drone. I suppose, but you be the judge. Number two, the aircraft. A passing commercial satellite seemed to have snapped its top secret next generation combat aircraft on the tarmac of Area 51. Tyler Rogaway of the War Zone was reviewing Planet Lab satellite photos on of the high profile secret site when he spotted something outside the ordinary. The highly classified United States Air Force Nevada testing facility is usually especially careful. Air operations are timed out during the gaps between Earth observation and surveillance satellite overpasses. But in this photo, on the taxiway leading through a massive new hangar was a strange shadow. It appears to be a translucent tent. Inside is the outline of what appears to be an unknown type of fighter aircraft. Area 51 is always a popular spot when it comes to publicly available satellite imagery, Tyler wrote. When glancing at daily 3 meter resolution images of the base, we noticed the appearance of a roughly delta shaped blob on the north apron of the large southern hangar. It stayed there between January 26 and 29th, 2022. So what was it? Why did they make this mistake? I don't know. Next up, we have the Area 51 entrance. So a few years back, satellite photos were shared online showing what looked to be a possible entrance to the ever elusive wonder that is Area 51. Someone was cruising around on Google Earth and spotted a road leading to a parking lot by the foothills of a mountain. Now, whatever this road leading to this parking lot uh, was actually built for, it wasn't there back in 1998, where satellite images of the same area showed there to be no road leading to this dead end area with the parking lot. So what's going on? It is pretty strange. Why have all these roads been built leading to a parking lot in seemingly dead end areas by the side of a mountain? There's, there's nothing there. It's not like, you know, they'd park there and then walk all the way back down the road to go somewhere else. No, it seems as if there's a secret tunnel that's been carved into the side of the mountain. I think Bob Lazar said something about uh, some mountain facility in Area 51. As for what's going on in there, your guess is as good as mine. Number 10, Contractor. A former NASA contractor went on video to reveal the fact that NASA has been keeping secrets from us. She says she both viewed and heard evidence that three NASA astronauts said that they had seen unidentified flying objects land on the moon, but that these events were later covered up in an operation that was codenamed Santa Claus. A fitting name as NASA wants you to believe that UFOs are just about as real as Santa. She says that she had clearance to enter Building 8 at NASA's Johnson Space Center back in the 1970s. She says that she received information over lunch from officials that if anyone was ever caught exposing aliens as real, they would lose their pensions, and apparently one person in the past had not only lost their pension, but had disappeared off the face of the earth. In the video, she said, they didn't threaten to kill me, but I got the message I shouldn't talk about it. She apparently went witnessed everything from employees being forced to burn photographic evidence and seeing official pictures being airbrushed to hide UFOs. Number 9, The Kecksburg File On the night of December 9th, 1965, a giant fireball which caused a sonic boom streaked across the sky before crashing into the woods in Kecksburg, Pennsylvania. Military immediately arrived and sealed off the area, hauling off a massive object the size of a bus to their Air Force base nearby in Ohio. The Pentagon 
Vaughn immediately tried to cover it up saying it was a meteorite, releasing no details about the incident. But in 2003, NASA went on to say that it was not a satellite, but two years later in 2005 they said yeah actually it was a satellite, just don't worry about it. The cover up seemed never ending and it just led more and more people to become interested in finding out the truth of the Kecksburg file. A Freedom of Information Act was then started to get the file looked into again and the judge threw away NASA's attempts to have the lawsuit thrown out. So in 2007 they announced they would be reopening the Kecksburg file, but they claimed that a majority of the files had been destroyed or lost and they never released what it actually was that crashed that day. Number 8. Astronaut Like I said in the first point, there is allegedly a conspiracy within NASA to cover up any of their employees or former employees talking about the fact that they have had alien experiences. But as I have mentioned in other parts of this list, there are actually a handful of astronauts who have spoken out about potentially alien encounters. Leland Melvin is probably best known for taking his astronaut photos with his rescued dogs, but what you're probably not familiar with is the fact that he has shared his alien experiences on Twitter. He received a question on Twitter that read, What's your outlook about the existence of intelligent alien life living in our solar system? Have you ever witnessed a UFO? And Leland went on to respond with, I have not seen one in space or on the ground, but thought I saw something organic slash alien like floating out of the payload bay. Randy Bresnik and I called the ground to ask what it could be and they said it was ice that had broken off of the Freon hoses. Translucent, curved, organic looking, with an alien emoji at the end. Of course he explains it by saying it was just ice, but that was probably just NASA feeding them an easy cover up. Next we have a photo taken in 1990 by two Scottish chefs who were working in a hotel near the area in which the photograph was taken. After a long day of work, it appears the two men had decided to take a hike in an attempt to blow off some steam. While this walk wouldn't end up being incredibly relaxing, it would be wildly exciting as not long after the two men had set off on their journey along the Calvine Scottish countryside, they noticed something hovering above them in the sky. The object was not one that either of the men could identify and so they pulled out their cameras in an attempt to document the 100 foot flying aircraft instead. The photos, which have been analyzed and show no signs of manipulation, capture the object being circled by a jet plane. They thought the incident was incredibly strange and even newsworthy, so the two turned the footage over to the local newspaper for publication, but the images were seized by the British Ministry of Defense and were never released. Until 32 years later, that is, by David Clark, who, unbeknownst to the ministry, had kept a photocopy of one of the original images. The identity of the two men was never revealed, nor did they ever come forward to share their story after the images had been seized by the ministry, begging the question of what exactly they saw and what exactly the government was trying to cover up. A photograph taken of an unidentified aircraft lit up by military spotlights in Los Angeles, California is next on the list. The photograph, which documents an event so big, it later became referred to as the Battle of Los Angeles or the Great Los Angeles Air Raid, was taken on February 23rd of 1942, just two months after the attack on Pearl Harbor. On the night the photo was taken, all of Los Angeles was under blackout, as directed by the US military. While the lights on the ground had been turned off, the sky above had been lit up by a myriad of strange objects. The military opened fire, and onlookers stood absolutely stunned as 1,400 rounds of ammunition appeared to have no effect on the unidentified flying object. Smoke filled the sky and when it cleared, not a single craft was to be found in the sky or on the ground. Shrapnel that appeared to have ricocheted off the target resulted in the death of five civilians. Furthermore, three were killed in car accidents due to the chaos of the event and two more of heart attacks due to the stress of the two hour long attack. And finally, we have a handful of screen grabs from a video taken by Lieutenant Commander Alex Dietrich whilst flying an 18F Super Hornet fighter jet over the Pacific Pacific Ocean near San Diego during a training mission for the United States Navy. The footage, taken in November of 2004, was captured after Dietrich was asked to investigate a suspicious object that had been seen dropping from 80,000 feet down to the surface of the ocean and then vanishing. When Alex and their colleague arrived on the scene, the ocean's surface, where the object had been reported, appeared as though it was boiling. Moments after arriving to investigate, a strange, elongated white object came into view 
and was captured on video hovering above the water before it disappeared into the sky at an impossible speed, leaving no wake in the oceans below. While the footage has been confirmed to be authentic by the United States Department of Defense, the object itself, along with its origins, remains a mystery. In our number 10 spot, we have Rahman Manuel. Chicago Mayor Rahman Manuel may be a shapeshifter reptile. I'll let you decide. In September 2012, during a press conference, viewers noticed that his eyes seemed to transform into, well, I'm not quite sure I know how to describe this because it's terrifying. <laughs> Around his eyes, we see darkness of some sort and suddenly his actual eyes become enlarged. Honestly, whatever happened wasn't human. <laughs> Did he reveal himself as a shapeshifter reptile? I'm thinking yes. If you're enjoying this video so far, smash that like button as it'll really help us out. In our number nine spot, we have Timothy Geithner. Former secretary to the treasurer, Timothy Geithner, has been accused of being a shapeshifter. Why? Well, because there's some weird footage of him possibly doing just that. Footage was taken of him at a press conference sitting and listening to the speaker when all of a sudden, something starts happening to his right eye. A weird pattern pattern that honestly looks like a pattern that you would see on a butterfly wing starts to form around his eye, sort of cupping it. It seems that it happens for a few seconds before he realizes it and tries to cover it up by touching the area and in an instant, it's gone. No one can deny that the footage is rather odd, especially as he touches the area and poof, it's magically gone. It is super possible that we have a butterfly shapeshifter on our hands, imagine. <laughs> if I could be a shapeshifter, that's what I would want to be. Something with wings, probably a fairy, that would be great. In our number eight spot, we have US General David Petrus. On June 15, 2010, the US General David Petrus appeared to faint during a conference, but at one point though, his face appeared to be, well, not human. The footage of this one does appear to be a tad blurry, but it does seem like something has happened to his face. His face looks like it's you know deformed, and the person that was looking at him and talking before he fainted did look a tad scared, but it could have been because he could see something was wrong. So there's that. But also at one point, somebody stood up and conveniently blocked the camera from seeing him. So that's sus. But honestly, the footage for this one is too blurry for me to say, yeah, probs are reptiles. But the people that filmed it and shared it, definitely said that they saw something that day and it did not look human. Number seven, moon crash. The Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter is similar to the Mars Orbiter that I have talked about before. It basically watches over the moon and takes pictures of its surface. Earlier this year, they released a photo that had many people scratching their heads and insisting that NASA was doing yet another cover up. The photo shows the surface of the moon with what is called a double impact crater. While the moon is covered in tons of craters, this one is unique for this reason. The evidence of the dozens of feet wide indentation seems to show that some sort of man-made spaceship crashed into the moon and left the divot. Many people on social media believe this to be evidence that some sort of alien craft had hit the moon, but NASA tried to shut everyone up by claiming it was just an out of control rocket. While they seem to know it was a rocket, they admitted that they don't have any idea where it came from or what its original path was intended to be. Be. So even if it's not aliens, it's still pretty confusing. Number six, alien photo. Mars is one of the main planets that many people believe could be host to aliens. Hence the term Martians and all the fictitious media that includes alien creatures visiting from Mars. On February 4th of this year, one person online dug up a photo that the Perseverance rover had taken on Mars back in 2021. The title of the blog post being, Alien Figure Watching Mars Rover, 100% proof of life UFO sighting news. The image seems to show a dark figure laying on a large Martian rock. It's distinctly human shaped and darkly colored and stands out from anything else in the area or what we've seen in previous pictures. Man explains in his blog post everything that he believes it to be. There is a person laying down watching the NASA Mars rover from a safe distance away. The person is about one foot tall, 0.3 meters and is lying down. Pinkish upper chest, neck and face, reddish hair, 
hair, wearing a dark suit, but has a grey object over one shoulder. Looks like a backpack of some sort. There are even footprints behind the person leading up to the location they chose to lay down at. If you don't agree with that, then what do you think it could be? Number 5. Mercury UFO Project Mercury was NASA's first ambitious space mission which took place back in the early 1960s which included 6 manned space flights. But that isn't what we're going to be focusing on. One of the Mercury probes sent out into space took a picture of what appears to clearly be a UFO. A photo that a NASA blogger found in an old disc from the mission that took place in December 1960 appears to show a strange shape that looks like it could be an alien spacecraft. While many arguments against UFOs are that they're just random space junk, this was at the beginning of NASA's steps out into space, so there really couldn't have been that many rocket pieces and broken panels floating around. The blogger says that he believes this is aliens wanting to watch one of humanity's biggest steps, not worrying about being seen because this particular craft didn't actually have any humans on it. Number 4. Deleted UFO This same blogger also recently found evidence of NASA purposefully covering up and deleting archival photos that appear to show evidence of aliens. He found a photo of what appears to be a large dark rectangular alien ship flying past the sun, and he also found that NASA is trying to hide it. On his blog he said, I found a huge rectangle UFO shooting past our sun and it's got to be several miles across or more. I tried to find it on another NASA site but I got an error message. Then I tried using official European Space Administration software and again error message. Then I went into the individual photos online and input my own URL, but these photo times do not exist. That's three different sources all erased from existence. I found it at a fourth source. He says that he won't reveal this other source as he doesn't want it taken down as well. There are 20 different photos in a row that all show the unidentified craft and he calls NASA out for never saying anything about it. Number 3. Mars Photos I talked about this on a separate list, but I also wanted to touch on it here too. We've taken a look at one Mars rover photo already, but I want to dive into just how many of these there are. People are constantly picking out unexplained and potentially alien things popping up in these photos of the red planet. One of the most baffling recent images is this one that appears to show some sort of carved out entryway which people believe must lead to some sort of alien hideout on the planet, looking too precise to have been caused by natural weather and environment conditions like NASA claims. There have also been many rocks that appear to be much more than just rocks as they stand out from anything else in the photos, almost looking like a sort of coral growing out from the ground through the dust. There are a lot of them and NASA has attempted to explain away all these photos, but there is still just a lot of mystery there. Number 2. The Calvine Photo This one is similar to the Kecksburg file in the way that it is also a UFO encounter from many decades ago that NASA tried to hide away by claiming it was lost. The photo was taken in August. August 1990 by two hikers near Calvine in Scotland. It shows what is clearly a large diamond shaped vessel flying through the sky, being trailed by another airplane. They took pictures and said it appeared to be about 30 meters long. It apparently then shot straight up into the sky and disappeared, never to be seen again. The photo was first given to the newspaper and then handed over to the Ministry of Defense, and then it was never discussed again and the photo apparently went missing. In October of 2021, when the Scottish Operations Records book was checked and there was no account of anything having been spotted in the sky on that day. One determined individual, however, managed to track down the lost photo and about it they said, The Calvine photograph stands as one of the biggest mysteries in UFO history. Finally revealed after 32 years, it shows that answers only bring new questions. Number 1. Space Nudes In May of this year, it was revealed to the public that NASA was going to be sending a message out to aliens calling it the beacon in the galaxy. It's a binary coded message that includes details about our planet and human life that is going to be shot into space for anybody to find. One of these images was revealed to be an image of what a genetically male and female human look like and yes, it has all the details. It also includes a diagram of gravity so aliens know which part of us is the top and which is the bottom. Other images included are the solar system diagram, a map of Earth's land mass, and depictions of things like 
like mountains and trees. So yes, NASA is actually sending our nudes out to space. The fact that they are doing this shows that at least a small part of the organization believes that aliens are out there to receive this message. Starting off on number 10 now, we have the beginning. When it comes to explaining to aliens everything about humans, the start is, well, a good place to start. This image shows conception, a sperm cell fusing with an egg cell, which will eventually divide and become a fetus and then a human just like you and me. Now, when I first saw this, I worried that the aliens might not really understand what scale we're talking on here. What if they think the sperm cell is the size of a truck and the egg cell is the size of a football stadium? They may think we're giants, but no. Luckily, scientists are a lot smarter than me. On the previous slide, they explained the sizes of egg and sperm cells to show the aliens that they are very, very, very small. Coming out number nine now, we have the location. This image explains to any reasonably intelligent aliens where exactly our solar system is. We've also included a picture of our nearest neighbor, the Andromeda Galaxy. It's hoped that this information on the slide will be enough for the aliens to figure out where we are. Of course, this is all pretty cool, but some people are a bit worried. Many feel that we shouldn't be so open about broadcasting our location to advanced life in the universe. If human history is anything to go by, technologically advanced groups rarely visit others just to say hello. Do you think people are just being paranoid with this or should we keep our voices down in this big bad universe of ours? Moving on to number eight now, we have the Taj Mahal. This is one of the most iconic buildings ever created. Located in India, it was built as a mausoleum for the Mughal Emperor in the 1600s. So why exactly does NASA think the aliens should want to see it? Well, they actually included a number of iconic buildings such as the Great Wall of China and the Sydney Opera House. Perhaps they're trying to show that buildings are important to us. After all, they are quite a uniquely human thing. No other animals build buildings like we build buildings. We absolutely love it. They become important to us, especially if they are grand, old, or have some historic importance to them. Will the aliens understand this or will they find our love of buildings a strange or even primitive quality? In our number seven spot, we have Lady Gaga. Okay. Lady Gaga is an interesting one because there is a video that seemingly shows something going on with her eyes, but also she literally said on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert that she, quote, has always liked to shapeshift. Very sus, Gaga. The viewers of the show thought that it was a very interesting choice of words, and so many thought that there was a bit of truth to what she said, as if the energy around the word held more weight. I don't know. Certainly there are so many people that believe that Lady Gaga has had contact with the devil, and so it would make sense if she was a shapeshifter. Remember that time she suspended something in the air with her magical force field? <laughs> okay, but for real, is she a magical devil-like being? or a shapeshifter. Would love to know your vote in the comment section below. In our number six spot, we have Meghan Markle. Meghan Markle, actress turned literal princess when she married Prince Harry, has had quite some speculation around her over being a robot. Now I've heard many things, including reptilian, and some people believe something has just, you know, replaced her. But the robot shapeshifter is an interesting theory. It started when a clip went viral over Harry and Meghan wearing masks to promote Madame Tussauds new Harry and Meghan edition. But what made everyone feel the creeps is not just the fact that their facial expressions are unsettling, but also because Meghan is not blinking. Terrifying. Whereas Harry apparently was. Anyways, I think that this got everyone to start theorizing that even though this is a mask, she may actually be a shapeshifter robot, and you know what? I don't blame them. <laughs> We're probs living in iRobot and don't even know it. In our number five spot, we have President Bush. Now, this is a clip of Papa Bush, the 41st president of the US, speaking in an interview and his eyes seem to change. For those of you who don't live in North America, there is a George Bush senior and junior, and they both became president of the US. Anyways, this clip is of George senior, AKA Papa Bush, and most people are in agreement that he is absolutely a reptilian. I mean, at this point, I'm starting to be convinced that all the politicians are, but who knows. 
Maybe the whole world is. Maybe I am. Honestly, I wish I could shapeshift. Then I would just shapeshift myself into a passenger that has a ticket to board a flight to Paris and peace out of here. You know what I mean? Anyways, in this clip, his eyes definitely form into slits, and there's no doubt that if this clip is real, and so many say that it is, then you know, he's definitely not human. And at number four spot, we have Eileen Wernos. Eileen Wernos, who is known as an American serial killer, did a number of interviews before she was executed on October 9th, 2002. During a number of her interviews, people claimed to have seen some weird shape shifting happening. This is a clip of an interview that she did where her eyes appeared to show that infamous reptile slit. You know, there is so many people that believe that sometimes shapeshifters are responsible for some of the worst crimes in the world, and then they just, you know, shapeshift out of prison afterwards after taking over the body of humans. That's definitely an interesting theory. I mean, regardless, clearly Eileen was evil, so even if she's not a shapeshifter, I'm sure someone could make a case for her being possessed by a demon. In our number three spot, we have Reptile Woman. This woman has been dubbed Reptile Woman for pretty obvious reasons. <laughs> the footage that was taken of this mystery woman surfaced online and was apparently not altered in any way. The footage seems quite normal until it's broken down frame by frame and suddenly it's as if you see a different person. Her hands look different, her back, her face, and her eyes. It's fascinating. I personally wish the footage was easier to see as it's not fully convincing me looking at something so blurry. It just makes me feel like it's been altered, but who knows? I may be wrong, and it sure seems like a lot of people believe that it's real. There have been a few people that have tried to debunk it, and truly I think I'm with them on their analysis. This one is too blurry for me to think that it's possibly real, but whatever. It might be. In our number two spot, we have M.W. Jeffrey Black Hodgson. Let's call him Jeff, you know, for short. <laughs> So Jeff is the Grand Master of the Masons in Massachusetts. Yeah, if you don't know anything about the Masons, then definitely have a Google sesh later tonight. That's a whole other rabbit hole in itself. But yeah, if you know anything about the Masons, then you probably won't be surprised that they are on this list. The Grand Master, the big guy calling the shots, is in this video, and he certainly shows signs of being a shapeshifter. From his eyes suddenly showing slits to his skin apparently showing evidence, there are a lot of people that believe that this guy is a shapeshifter. And in our number one spot, we have Britney Spears. Okay, this one I refuse to believe is real because I love her. God, I do not want to believe it, but the footage certainly makes you think that it's possible that she's a shapeshifter or that a shapeshifter at some point had taken over her body. That to me would check out more when you think of everything that she has been fighting for recently in terms of her freedom and gaining full control of her body back again. Who knows? Perhaps there is way more to it than we can imagine. I just love her though, so I refuse to believe that she was born a reptile. Anyway, Anyways, in this shot, her eyes seemingly show slits at times, just like a lot of the other footage that we've shown, and this would point to some kind of reptile living within her. Starting off this countdown, we have the secret entrances. Just last year, a man claimed to have found three hidden entrances that lead to Area 51. He discovered this after using Google Earth. He compared images of the base from different time periods. In one particular area in 1998, there seems to be no roads or entrance. Satellite pictures of that same location in 2005, 2010, and 2013 show a road and a dead end with what looks like an entrance and tunnel carved into a mountain. In fact, at the dead end, there appears to be cars parked there. Seems unusual for people to just park there, because what is around for them to do? Wander the barren plain alone? No, they're parking their cars there and then entering Area 51 through this secret entrance. In our ninth spot, we have the alien craft. What I'm about to show you is a leaked video and some photos from Area 51 of an alien spacecraft test. The video features a flying object hovering in the sky and moving in ways that other crafts definitely don't do. This was recorded on May 15, 2017 and then was leaked years later. If this isn't actually a UFO, then what could it be? That's what's baffling people. The way it just moves up and down and side to side that quickly is very strange, especially because of its size. 
What do you think though? Is this proof that Area 51 has gotten their hands on an alien spacecraft? Moving on to number 8, we have the transportation of a UFO. When this next photo was leaked online, it was met with a number of conspiracy theories. So this is the image of the CIA transporting a large part for one of their top secret projects. In fact, when this was getting transported, the CIA sealed off the entire highway. And I'm sure you can see why this was met with a number of conspiracy theories. Like look at the shape of the thing that they're transporting. That is definitely a UFO or part of a UFO spaceship. Now this is where it gets even more interesting. Somehow a group of bikers made it onto the road. When they were stopped by some soldiers, they asked what they were transporting. And the soldier said they found a UFO up in the mountains. Now apparently he said this jokingly, but who knows? At number 7 now, we have the womb. This is quite an interesting one. It shows the outline of a male and female couple, and the female is pregnant. This is obviously an attempt to show the aliens how we reproduce. This might seem obvious to us, but you have to remember, extraterrestrial life may have a completely different way of reproducing. They might be horrified that humans grow in a womb for 9 months. Probably not horrified, but you get the idea. This slide is just one of many that attempt to show the aliens how we procreate, how we are born and how we grow. Moving on to number six now, we have the animals. NASA included a number of pictures of animals on the disc. This is one of my favorites, showing wildebeest and zebras drinking alongside each other in Africa. Now you may think it's strange to include pictures of other animals when this is about us and aliens contacting each other. However, NASA felt that it wouldn't be a true representation of Earth if they didn't include other animals too. After all, we may dominate this planet, but we're not the only ones who call it home. The picture of animals show that we are not alone on this planet and that perhaps we even speak on their behalf if it ever comes to a point of contact with an alien civilization. Next up at number five now, we have Home. That's the name of this picture taken by NASA in the 1970s. At the bottom, you can see they've included the diameter of Earth as 12,756 kilometers. This is the only full picture of Earth that was included. What will the aliens make of it? Some other slides explain what our atmosphere is made of. I'm sure they can figure out that the white bits are clouds and the blue bit is our ocean. Hopefully they know it's water. Do you think so too? Also this brings me back to our previous point. I know some of you are a bit paranoid about alien invasions, thanks Hollywood. If so, do you think it's a good idea to include pictures of our planet and what exactly it's made of? Could that be used against us? I personally don't think we have to worry but it's quite an interesting idea. Moving on to number four now, we have eating. Here is a man enjoying a bunch of grapes. It may look like nothing to you, but it might help aliens understand a lot about us. The universe is a big place. Aliens may be so different to us that we can't even imagine what they would be like. However, it's safe to assume that they, like us, need energy. To live is to consume energy in some form or another. Aliens might have their own unique way of getting their energy, but for us, it's food. This picture helps explain that humans and many other creatures on Earth consume food for energy so that we can survive. Hopefully they don't think we only eat grapes though. That would get pretty boring quite quickly. Next up, at number three now, we have tectonic. In this image, we can see three different Earths. The top and bottom might look unfamiliar to you. The top one is what Earth looked like when it was one and a half billion years old. All of the continents were just kind of mushed together. Tectonic activity in the Earth's crust sent them apart from each other, drifting and crashing into each other until they resembled the middle picture. That's what Earth looks like for us today. And there's a little human hand there to show that this is the era of Earth we humans live in. The bottom one shows what Earth will look like in a further 10 million years. This is based on scientific predictions. Now you may think this is a bit redundant, but just wait. Voyager 1 could be traveling in space for millions of years. Maybe aliens won't find it for another 10 million years. Will humans even still be around then? Perhaps. Either way, our map of what the Earth will look like by then may be far more accurate than what it looks like now. Moving on to number two now, we have sport. This is a picture of sprinters in a race at the 1976 Olympics held in Montreal. So, why why did NASA want aliens to see this one? Well, sport and competition have always been a huge part of the human story. It was competition that made us spread across the planet, and now it's sport that brings us together to compete in various events. It's a common bond that all human cultures seem to share in one way or another. This is also a contrast 
to the images of war and trouble that we often see on the news. This is NASA trying to show aliens that despite our differences, we are more similar than not. Call it the Olympic spirit or even the human spirit, it's a good picture to include that they can understand what exactly is going on. And finally now at number one, we have the cars. This picture was taken from a busy road in India. There are a few others like it that show humans with their cars. It seems like NASA wanted to show the aliens that we build things to do better jobs than we ever could. If they recognize that we constructed these cars, they may see in us a desire to reach beyond the physical limitations of our own human bodies. Perhaps this is something they will recognize in themselves too. Any aliens that find Voyager 1 will have to have plucked it from space. If that happens, there's a very good chance they will have had to use machinery just like our cars and space rockets. After all, we don't know of any living thing that can survive in space by itself forever. Perhaps they can though. Perhaps they see our obsession with machines as nothing more than filling a hole in the human condition. Number 10. Nighttime Operations On November 15th, 2020, well-known YouTube videographers Tim and Tracy of the UFO Seekers channel took an interesting clip shot from outside the restricted Nevada Test and Training Range, or the NTTR. The new video shows some common NTTR activity, including the camo dude, security personnel, the comings and goings of NTTR, TTR employee shuttles, and more interestingly, a lot of air activity over the region, especially at night. The video showed what is most likely a significant nighttime special operations tactical training exercise or capabilities tested at the Nevada Test and Training Range. Most interestingly, the scene appears to be lit by a series of LUU 19 BB infrared airdropped illumination flares for use with night vision devices. The video was 20 minutes long and shows a series of bright lights at low altitude as viewed through their infrared night vision video equipment. Visible in the video are a series of orbiting lights around the brighter descending lights. About specific tests and training activities inside the NTTR don't surface often, the US Air Force published an article on October 24, 2020, saying operations on the Nevada test and training range are continuous. When one operation finishes, another is right behind it, ready to begin. The couple also caught a video of security vehicles and a large bus leaving the gated area distantly adjacent from where the action in their video took place. Now, it's impossible to tell what's actually going on exclusively from the video, but whatever it was, it was big and it looked interesting. All right, so this next photo is of Jerry Freeman uh, taken on a forbidden trip back in 1997. And his head here is supposedly covering the area where the secret S4 hangars are, according to the legendary Bob Lazar. So this guy had uh, quite the adventure uh, close to the forbidden military base. And according to him, he was actually within the restricted area at points, but uh, the exact borders of Area 51 aren't really shared with the public. So what's the story with this guy? Jerry Freeman, an archeologist, decided in 1997 that he was going to embark on a seven day trek into the highly restricted Nevada test site. The funny thing is about this case though, is that he really had no interest in what most of us would want to see behind the Area 51 curtain. Uh, he was just interested in tracing back the trail of the lost 49ers pioneers who had traversed the area in 1849. He was in search of an inscription made by one of the pioneers, which was believed to be a Nye Canyon above Papoose Lake on the Nellis Air Force Base, totally off limits. Freeman spent days avoiding security. He slept with nothing but a blanket and the clothes on his back. He traveled very light, too light. He was running out of water by the end. And the funny thing is, is that after this dangerous trek, people were asking him like, so did you see Area 51? What's in there? Where are the UFOs, man? And again, just had no interest in that side of it. So he was like, uh, I think at one point I, I might've seen Area 51. Uh, he like climbed on a ridge above Nye Canyon looking down on Papu's Dry Lake, which is just south of Area 51. And he was like, uh, yeah, during the day I didn't see much, but one night I saw some lights. One looked like it was coming from a security vehicle. One was kind of stationary, but it seemed to grow and like shrink in size. Could have been a, a hangar door opening and closing. I don't know, it's an interesting kind of case. Number eight, Codename Hood. A book by Los Angeles Times journalist Annie Jacobson, Area 51, an uncensored history of America's top secret military base, Little Brown, tells the story of the famous site that has spurred tales and rumors of intrigue and cover-ups. Annie dove through thousands of recently declassified documents to reveal what happened in the 1940s, 50s, and 60s at the government-restricted area near Groom Lake, Nevada. In the book, there were some photos, and for this one, Annie said, the black device attached 
attached to this balloon in Area 9 of the Nevada test site is a 74 kiloton atomic bomb codenamed Hood, the largest atmospheric nuclear weapon ever exploded in the United States. Standing on a ladder minutes before this photograph was taken on July 5th, 1957, Al O'Donnell put the final touches on the bomb firing system. Area 51 is over the hill to the right of the device, and on the next page and photo, and row, a column of radioactive smoke rises from the Hood bomb. To the right of the mushroom stem, the landscape can be seen on fire. Approximately one hour after the bomb went off, security guard Richard Migas drove through Ground Zero to set up a guard post at the Area 51 guard gate directly over the burning hills. In our seventh spot, we have the Tic Tac UFO. Last year, another UFO was spotted near Area 51. This one was given the name the Tic Tac UFO because of its Tic Tac shape and white or bright appearance. So this spacecraft was caught on footage by a person driving along near Area 51. He was driving along the extraterrestrial highway, that's the name given to the highway in Nevada, as a number of UFOs have been seen by drivers while on this route. At first, the driver thought that what he was seeing was just a cloud. When he got closer to it, he realized that it was definitely a craft of some kind. Later on, alien hunter Scott Waring confirmed that the UFO was in fact alien in origin. Also, the area in which he was driving through had a number of wind farms in the area. Turns out that in the past, a lot of UFOs have been spotted around wind farms, and one UFO even crashed into a windmill many years back. Some say this is because aliens are fascinated with human technology. In our sixth spot, we have Stephen Barron. In 2016, UFO hunter Steve Barron captured video and photographic evidence of another alien spacecraft close to Area 51. These were taken near his home in Las Vegas, Nevada, an hour drive from Area 51. Using a night vision camera, Steve head out to Red Rock Canyon to try and capture a UFO. The first couple of hours, there was nothing. Then he saw mysterious weird flashing lights appear over a mountain. He said this in regards to the UFO and its lights, and I quote, First one, then two, then more and more. They put on a spectacular show. I am glad I was patient because the show they put on kept getting better and better. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the CIA spy plane. In 2011, Los Angeles Times journalist Annie Jacobson published a book called Area 51, an uncensored history of America's top secret military base. In the book, she included a number of never before seen photos of the base. The first one I want to show you is of a CIA spy plane. This photo shows an A-12 ox cart hidden behind a barrier at Area 51. This was a top secret plane that was created to reach high speeds and altitudes. During the first three years of testing this plane, everything was kept top secret. In fact, the pilots weren't even allowed to tell their wives what they were working on. On May 24th, 1963, during a test flight, the plane crashed. The pilot, Ken Collins, was fine, but had to eject himself out of the plane. But afterwards, the CIA actually injected him with sodium pentothal, aka truth serum, to then interrogate him after the crash. That's crazy. In our fourth spot, we have the rare photo. So this photo was also featured in Annie Jacobson's book, Area 51, an uncensored history of America's top secret military base. In fact, this is a very rare photo that has never been published before. It was published for the first time in Annie's book, and that's it. This photo is an aerial view of Area 51 taken in 1964. I don't know why it was kept a secret for so long or how Annie got her hands on it, but she did and decided to share it with the world. Moving on at number three, we have the early U-2 spy planes. In the early 1950s, at the peak of the Cold War, the CIA began to develop planes that they wanted to reach an altitude of 70,000 feet to avoid detection against Soviet radar. This gave birth to the U-2 spy planes that you see here in this picture. This photo was taken in Area 51 in 1956, and pictures a worker standing on the plane's wing. Sadly, at least three pilots lost their lives during test flights, including two at Area 51 and one at an Air Force base in Germany. Coming in at number two, we have Boyd Bushman. Shortly before his death, former Area 51 engineer Boyd Bushman revealed that he encountered aliens while working at Area 51. In a video, Bushman shows a number of mysterious photos to the camera, including one of an alien and a number of photos of the alien's appendages. We have a total of at least 18 that exist 
and operate with our facility. Now many people believe that this man is telling the truth. Why? Because he had nothing to gain or lose by sharing his story. Plus, an interrogator with the police studied Boyd's movements and speech pattern during this interview, and he said that it appears as if he's telling the truth. In the interview, he said that Area 51 has at least 18 of these aliens in their facility. He also claims that there are two groups of aliens. One group are called the Wranglers, the others are called the Rustlers. The aliens that are considered Wranglers are friendly and have a better relationship with humans. Rustlers, however, have been known to steal cattle. This is all insane. And in our number one spot today, we have Boyd Bushman and the UFO. During his interview, Boyd Bushman also revealed photos of real UFO spacecrafts that he saw while working at Area 51. Up close and personal, this is a UFO which is ready to take off. So that's a close up photo of a UFO spacecraft taking off. Then he also showed a different photo of a UFO spacecraft with its lights turned off. What do you think though? Is Boy telling the truth? Are those real photos of UFOs? Let me know in the comments below. Our journey begins with the infamous Patterson Gimlin film, a grainy footage from 1967 that purports to show a female Bigfoot striding across a clearing. Roger Patterson and Robert Gimlin, two cowboys from Yakima, Washington, captured this iconic image during an expedition to Northern California. The creature dubbed Patty stands as a monolith of mystery, a symbol of our never-ending quest for answers. Next we delve into the intriguing tale of the Beast of Whitehall. Back in 1976, upstate New York became the epicenter of Bigfoot attention. A photo, leaked to the public, showed a creature with glowing eyes lurking in the shadows. The local police, initially investigating a group of teenagers' report of a strange beast, became witnesses themselves. The Beast of Whitehall still haunts the local folklore, a chilling reminder of the unknown lurking in the dark. Then there's the Minnesota Iceman, a supposed Bigfoot body frozen in a block of ice. The photo, which emerged in the late 60s, sparked widespread controversy. The Iceman, displayed at carnivals and fairs by showman Frank Hansen, became a sensation yet its authenticity remains a hotly debated topic among cryptozoologists. Fast forward to the 21st century, and we find the Independence Day footage, a video leaked in 2005. It allegedly shows an adult Bigfoot and its offspring in the wilds of Northern California. The clarity of this footage, combined with the uncommon sight of a juvenile Bigfoot, makes it one of the most compelling pieces of evidence yet. In this exploration, we've journeyed through time, revisiting some of the most infamous leaked Bigfoot photos. We've delved into the story of Patty from the Patterson-Gimlin film, The Haunting Beast of Whitehall, the controversial Minnesota Iceman, and the extraordinary Independence Day footage. Each image, each tale, adds a new layer to the mystery that is Bigfoot. Yet the question remains, are these genuine glimpses of a hidden creature, or elaborate hoaxes designed to deceive? As we continue to ponder, remember truth is often stranger than fiction. Until next time, keep questioning, keep seeking, and you just might uncover a truth hidden in plain sight.